Gracias. everyone. Welcome to the Kababai and Kasali Kayo Show. I'm Sabrina Salas Matanani filling in for Auntie Sally uh, Kino. You know, I used to do a show every uh, morning back in the day uh, with the national anthem. So I thought I'd start it off with that. Ladies and gentlemen, Senator Whitney Parkinson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed was, was the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we won were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. to those Masi colleagues and for sharing all your talent with us. And that, my friends, was one of the legislature's greatest hits. And I also wanted to play it to commemorate uh, our elected leader's first 100 days in office. And what a 100 days it has been. I mean, from the very first session, it started off with a bang. Senator Parkinson, you are recognized. I move to nominate uh, Senator Teresa Lahi as Speaker of the 37th Guam Legislature. And you are recognized. I nominate Senator Joseph Nagaski for Speaker of the 37th Guam Legislature. Thank you. Move to nominate uh, Senator Frank Bloss Jr. for Speaker. The number of votes required under the standing rules for the voting of Speaker requires eight votes. So no one is elected uh, at this, this uh, time. time. Legislature uh, stands in recess uh, subject to the recall of the presiding officer. We are recessed. Thank you. I don't know about you, but these last 100 days have gone by so fast. Uh, it's left people, quite a few people, furious and some very happy. For example, it is a done deal. GovGuam employees are set to get a 22% pay raise. But I want to share with you, ladies and gentlemen, that you guys deserve, deserve the 22%. The, the, the As a matter of fact, you probably deserve more. If not, yes. 
In the last 100 days, leaders have talked about education. We still don't know what's going on or what's happening with the lease for the governor's new hospital complex. Yesterday's deadline came and went. What else? There was the fake amendment. Uh, and just this week, we saw a public hearing on a bill to limit the governor's superpowers during a public health emergency and a bill to cane criminals. I stand, I sit here representing all those people out there who are sick and tired of crime, sick and tired of being victimized. And I'm not going to have this anymore, not on my watch. I'm going to try to do my very best. If, th if this bill doesn't pass, I'm going to do something else until we punish the people who commit crimes against others. I will not, you will not deter me. You will not. So in its current form, I don't know if I, if I can support it. I hope that uh, we can make it better and we'll um, meet constitutional muster. But that being said, again, I, I just want to say, again, I, I give the, the author all, all kudos because he's had it. He's had it. And Santa can get mad as well. He knows when you are naughty. You know, for me personally, I support. I, I was thinking about dropping as well, capital punishment. I I think we we continue to hear the nonsense of people being released, and we continue to go around again in circles and circles of trying to catch a mouse with a a cat or a dog. It's, it's really ridiculous. So I, I guess with this opportunity, there are going to be some challenges with any opportunity, right? And I think the author's intent is all oh, what we want is to really find some justice for those individuals who have been wrongfully treated and, again, help them find some closure to their situation. We're in a um, scary position right here. We're in a scary position. Where we're willing to, to throw away what makes us a democracy all because we're frustrated with a crime. Lan, if you're frustrated with a crime, call your buddies at Adeloupe and tell them to do a better job of enforcing it. And one of the most recent measures, killing off primary elections. And I have a lot of memories about that. But well, we are just getting started. Stay tuned. Up next, Congressman James Moylan joins us live in studio to reflect on his first 100 days in office and much more. Island Family Pharmacy is committed to providing care and service that goes beyond dispensing prescriptions. We offer personalized services focused on quality care, outstanding customer experience with prompt and professional attention. At our pharmacy, you are family. Candid News will soon be reaching a milestone fifth year since it was established in 2018. We are a platform for advocacy journalism. We expose corruption, fight against the sexual exploitation of children, and tend to support the underdog, the underprivileged, and those trying to find a path from addiction. With over 50,000 followers, we offer advertising opportunities for both large and small businesses. We offer competitive rates that are often well below what other advertising agencies charge their clients. Give us a call today.
Good morning and welcome back uh, to the show. Joining me live in studio to catch up on some of the things he's been doing uh, on behalf of the people of Guam in the nation's capital is Congressman James Moylan. Thank you for being here. And joining today. Us here I'm glad to be home. You know, before we get into uh, your first 100 days in office, again, congratulations. The first uh, elected Republican congressman in uh, about 30 years, I yes. believe, since uh, the late Congressman Ben Bloss. How have you been dealing um, so far with the transition from being a leader here on, at the legislature to leading us in uh, D.C.? Yeah, well, we're taking the same speed, yeah. uh, of course, as uh, when we were Senate, uh, when as a senator, uh, 35th in the 36th Guam legislature. Uh, and since we arrived in D.C., uh, we, we've been keeping up with that speed. Uh, and there's a lot of fast moving parts over there in Washington and we're learning the ropes and we're making sure that uh, our voice is heard uh, being uh, a delegate from Guam, uh, being a Republican delegate from Guam. As you mentioned, the last time there was one was over 30 years ago uh, with our General uh, Ben Bloss, our first Marine Chamorro General. And hopefully not the last, but we'll have more. And he did a fine example for us uh, and a good, good work ethic. And I actually have his picture in my office, too. A, um, a constituent did come by our office during the openings and delivered some pictures of, of Ben Blas. Uh, so I tell the story. And of course, our Marine Corps ba uh, base being built on Guam is named after Ben Blas. And in the 36th Guam legislature, I think the body did elect and it was approved to rename the road in front of the camp after Ben Blas, which connects to Marine Corps Drive. So with that, that spirit and that energy, I've been uh, working just as hard uh, to make sure our voice is heard uh, and getting things accomplished. And just within the start, we're, we're out the door running and we'll continue to do so. And, and you're here on Guam. You've been all over the place. I've, I've seen your, <laughs> your social media. You've been holding uh, town hall meetings, for example, this week. You had one in Mangila. Uh, I believe it was about veterans issues. And then yes. I, you were in uh, Timuning Thursday. I kind of briefly stopped by there. Yes, I didn't thank realize you. there were a lot of people that just yeah. don't follow the rules of the road. Right. And, and then I believe I saw you last night. Um, at the legislature's town hall meeting yes. in Dededo. So yes. what were some of the concerns that um, people have been uh, raising? Sure, uh, well to start with the first town hall meeting in Manila and I thank the mayor and uh, for setting that up for us. It was very helpful. Uh, we did have a huge crowd. My estimate was over, over 100 uh, veterans that were there. So it was well uh, attended. Uh, the, the panel, Oh, it was really good as well. We had the director of our Veterans Affair uh, here on Guam who was present. We had American Red Cross present. Uh, we had also the uh, doctor in charge of SEBOC uh, uh, present uh, as well. And uh, Veterans Commission was there. Uh, and also our vice speaker and, and, and senators, uh, um, let me see, that was Jesse and also San Nicholas were present as well. So a nice panel that we had there. Uh, the questions were, of course, relating to the veterans um, services and medical uh, care. Uh, bottom, bottom line is we, we need to break off from Hawaii and have the services available here. But in order to do that, we need to show the numbers to reflect uh, that we, we, it's necessary for us uh, to have our, our cases uh, adjudicated here and services provided here to include our sister um, islands and our sister nations too. So um, we, we had some good notes. Uh, we, they submitted their paperwork also with notes that we can take back and we're looking at um, addressing many of the issues. Mm -hmm. And some of the issues were also addressed by the panel uh, that night too. But there's things we need to go back and, and come back with responses. So as we return every, every month is my goal, uh, then we can provide updates uh, from these town hall meetings and the issues that we took uh, care of. And at, after that one, we had a, a coffee up in Timuni McDonald's. Oh, yes. Yeah, so that, that was nice too, just talking with folks, enjoying our coffee is something I plan to continue to. And uh, finally, the last uh, town hall meeting within that week uh, was in Timuni as well. Uh, I was very appreciative of, of the administration uh, providing their directors to come on over uh, to answer questions um, a lot regarding public safety and I needed to see what what I can do in Congress to assist so we had the director of CQA there uh, the chief of police um, fire representatives uh, as well and I thank the mayor Rivera also for providing the facility for us so 
um, I just want, want to let, every, let everybody know our, um, it's important when I do come on back, I have the ability to meet with our mayors and to have our town hall meetings and to get out there to hear the voice of the people. Uh, it, sometimes my trips are short and sometimes it's far in between, but my goal is to at least come back once a month uh, to reflect on what's going on in, in D.C., to get with you, Bree, and, and get on the air as well uh, and tell the people what's going on and then to take their, uh, their concerns back home to D.C. as well. So what would be your first, I guess, action item when, when you get back to D.C.? And let's just start with uh, with the veterans issues, because like you said, they're, they're very vocal and a lot of them are, are really unhappy uh, with the kind of services they've been getting over the years. All right. So there, there's a few, a couple of committees I'm involved with. It's um, uh, House Armed Services Committee mm -hmm. and the Natural Resources Committee. Uh, uh, the Natural Resources Committee as well. I'm not a member of the Veterans Committee, but we do have friends in the Veterans Committee. Uh, it's a, it's um, it's not going to happen overnight, right. okay? and it, it's a long process. Uh, but with their concerns, I, I can reflect. I can bring that to uh, the Veterans Committee and help uh, push these things forward. Uh, and I think I think now uh, the United States is really looking at Guam, right? Uh, for the defense of the nation and the amount of money that is being put into our island is tremendous. No place else in the, con in the continental U.S. is so much money being placed uh, for the defense other than in Guam, right? So our voice, it, we have this opportunity to leverage that, whether it be veterans issues, whether it be uh, public safety issues, uh, public health issues, uh, COFA issues, our voice can now be heard. Uh, at SSI, what we talked about it as well, uh, because the United States sees our importance for the defense of the nation and protection of our community, uh, and they want to make sure uh, our relationship stays strong. With the Marines coming from Okinawa uh, being based on Guam, uh, that relationship has to be solid uh, so we can grow together. Uh, and I've been, had the, also the ability to meet the Commandant of the Marine Corps and, and the Deputy Commandant too, and their point blank question is what can we do to make things go right? Uh, th those are uh, the, these uh, um, officers are, are the voice to the President of the United States, right? right? Uh, and Department of Defense, Secretary of Defense as well. So the, the, the eyes are on Guam. Uh, the voice of the people can, uh, through, through the, our office, will be heard uh, in support with the governor as well. And listening to our, our um, directors and working closely with them and listening to our mayors at, uh, too and bringing those concerns up. Uh, so we have some issues or some uh, resources that we're looking at providing for Guam uh, that the mayors need and inputting that into amendments through the National Defense Authorization Act. Yeah. So my team is uh, working really hard and doing that process. Um, mm -hmm. We're experienced with our budget on Guam, but yeah. when you get to DC and you get to <laughs> these 3,000 pages and, and, and how you submit it on the computer and how it has to be written up just correctly, uh, the team really learned quickly on that with, with good cooperation uh, through the agencies on Guam and with good cooperation with the administration. So we'll know soon how things go. We're going to talk a little bit more about the pivot to, to the Pacific uh, a little bit later in the program, but um, I wanted to talk about uh, SSI uh, mm -hmm. because that was actually one of the, uh, it was the very first uh, speech that you made on the House floor regarding the Scholar twins. But since you made that speech, what sort of progress have you made? In, making some um, in-wins. Right. Um, so the territories, uh, uh, Puerto Rico uh, as well, and, and Guam, uh, were left out of mm -hmm. SSI. How that happened, uh, I'm not sure. But there's an inequality, right? and it needs to be uh, provided uh, for, uh, of course, I'm rooting for Guam, you know, but, but it should be provided for every territory. So since, since that time of the speech, uh, we've uh, co-sponsored a bill with Puerto Rico to, for us to be included for SSI. Uh, in addition, uh, how, how the movement goes forward on different bills, you still have to have other options too. So we did introduce a, a standalone bill for Guam for SSI too. So now, now it comes the um, uh, now it comes the selling, right? So com coming back uh, to DC, we have our, we're prepared to do the selling. So. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's getting to the leadership of the Republican Party to get their backing. It's one-on-one -on -one to, to meeting with my classmates, I call them, in the 118th Congress to get their support too and building that relationship so they can understand 
and the voice of the people is, of course, being heard louder now that Guam is so important, then I, we have a good position to get that added for, for Guam. Uh, I think it's going to be a hard argument to say why, why if, if not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I think, it would, I think the United States uh, would see Guam and, and see the inequality that we have as, as expressed by the, um, on our speech on the floor regarding the, the twins and how sad that, that was to happen. But if you went to Saipan, you would, you'll be eligible for the SSI. Yeah. Right, you're coming from the mainland. You're eligible for the SSI, uh, you, you, it, but but you're, you're not when you come to where America's day begins, and and that's wrong. Uh, so we're we're fighting for that, and and uh, we're going to ask, of course, our constituents on Guam to uh, to also help us on that. The governor will help us on that too. And we can be united and bring that voice forward. Well, we are going to continue our discussions with Congressman Moylan, um, and we talked about SSI. This is actually, like I said, it was his uh, very first speech on the House floor. Um, we're going to share a portion of that. It is uh, uh, related to the tragic story of Katrina and Leslie Schaller. The twins were living in Pennsylvania, uh, were receiving SSI benefits, and the untimely passing of uh, their mother happened, and then they were separated. Uh, I believe it was Leslie who uh, stayed with family in Pennsylvania, then Katrina. Uh, moved to Guam uh, and stayed with family here that took care of her uh, and when she got here she completely lost uh, all her SSI benefits here's a portion of that speech why you may ask well because of federal inequity which denies American citizens who reside in most territories the rights to secure SSI benefits the federal law strips away the financial benefits from American citizens with disabilities who relocate from a state to Guam, American Samoa, Virgin Islands, or Puerto Rico. We need to change this inequity. Why are U.S. citizens who reside in U.S. territories denied benefits they can attain if they were residing in a state this is a real case of unfairness. Did you know that Guam has among the highest per capita numbers of enlisted members in the United States Armed Services throughout the nation? Yes, we too are proud Americans. There have been lawsuits to fix this inequity, and the courts, they have simply ruled that SSI benefits were created by Congress and hence can be changed by Congress. So let's change it and do what is right. Katrina and Leslie are both no longer with us in the world today. In Leslie's final days, she said she sadly wouldn't be able to witness when this wrong would be made right. And while neither sister may be here, let us fix this inequity in their name and in the name of many others who have been denied this benefit just because they reside in a U.S. territory. Island Family Pharmacy is committed to providing care and service that goes beyond dispensing prescriptions. We offer personalized services focused on quality care, outstanding customer experience with prompt and professional attention. At our pharmacy, you are family. Candid News will soon be reaching a milestone fifth year since it was established in 2018. We are a platform for advocacy journalism. We expose corruption, fight against the sexual exploitation of children, and tend to support the underdog, the underprivileged, and those trying to find a path from addiction. With over 50,000 followers, we offer advertising opportunities for both large and small businesses.
We offer competitive rates that are often well below what other advertising agencies charge their clients. Give us a call today. Welcome back to, to Candid. Um, we talked about it earlier, the National Defense Authorization Act of 2024, I believe uh, just for uh, Guam, there's almost about a trillion dollars packed into that budget, at least 1.5 uh, billion for the missile defense system. A lot of people on Guam concerned about what's happening in our in our region. So what what is the status um, with the conversations you've had about the defense of Guam? Uh, the buildup is is happening, and our my concern, after speaking with the uh, commanders of Indo-PACOM, is the speed of, of of what we need to do to get things ready as soon as possible and cut through the red tape, and and get our our facilities and our buildup done uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, the threat is there. The threat is real, uh, and the defense of the nation is is necessary and where America day, days begin, uh, right here on Guam. Mm -hmm. uh, so our commanders are very concerned on uh, the speed, right? We had to bring so much material, so much uh, fuel, so much, uh, it, which is a very important part, and, and so much supplies to support this buildup. And it's, we're getting there, um, but, but it's not, not there yet. Uh, one, one thing in particular is the concern of the H-2B workers and with the uh, Defense Act now being addressed, it's the length of time in the contract that we can provide. We need, we can't just have a one-year contract all the time. Uh, the contractors are concerned of when we do provide their H-2B workers, uh, not this continuous renewal, can renewal, and not knowing if, if Congress will allow H-2Bs to come in uh, the following budget cycle, but to have it permanent uh, for a period of time, I think we're looking at 2029 as as well. So that's that's the push in Congress, and that's the push with the House Armed Services Committee. Uh, and then that goes further down the line. It's going to go to judiciary as well, and there's some immigration concerns or the border concerns that they have. But we need to uh, point that out, that that's not Guam's uh, situation. Uh, it, the Guam situation is we need these workers in order to complete the task, uh, which, by the way, will be also helpful uh, for the uh, housing issues on Guam too, right? So, um, uh, as long as we get this done, uh, we're in a, def a defensive position. We're not the aggressors. We're defending the Constitution of the United States. And when the aggressors see us, our adversaries see us, of, of our capabilities, uh, then it's beware and back off, right? That, that's the emphasis that we're putting there. Uh, but now it seems more like a catch-up situation where we were focused, the United States was focused on one area, but now the focus is uh, on Guam, indo pacom region. Uh, and there, once we complete this, this is where we'll, they'll stay. Uh, because that threat uh, until the Communist Party is eliminated or, or just vanishes on its own, uh, it, then we can't let our guard down. Right. And I remember talking about this, um, about the Pacific Deterrence Initiative and all the, the, the money that's going to be coming to Guam and the importance of uh, this missile defense system here. Uh, what have you heard um, on, um, I guess, the latest on, because on, I know they were talking about where representatives from the missile defense system were actually on Guam. They were looking at potential sites, one of them actually being where uh, the governor wants to build the new Guam medical complex. Uh, have you had any, or do you know any um, new information on where these potential sites are going to be situated for the for the missile defense system? Yeah, so the, the specifics, of course, um, uh, is uh, uh, that information, of, cor of course, that's a military uh, situation, right? I, I, I know of, but the conversation is a little different. Mm -hmm. the, the scope is what they want to do is 360. Right, right. right? So the, the specifics and the mo mobility of them, if it's stationary, mobile, uh, there's new technology, and that technology is coming to Guam, right? But, but the finances need to, to be part of that, and President Biden's uh, 
budget proposal did not include that. So we wrote, uh, our office wrote to President Biden saying, hey, you're short $142 million. This is what Indo-PACOM commanders need. This is what's needed to um, uh, provide that 360 uh, protection for the island. We need to, to stop these missiles from coming, uh, not too close uh, to Guam, but way out there, right? Uh, way up there as well, too, to make, to make it as simple as possible and putting it in those terms. And to do that, this is the missiles that we are required. So that amendment also uh, is going into the National Defense Act. I'm sure I can get the support of my other members in the House Armed Services Committee too. And we did invite the, them to come to Guam. Uh, we did. We were successful also in getting members of Congress to come to Guam within the first 30, uh, first 90 days uh, while we were there. Uh, the group that came on out was the Appropriations Committee. Right, so, so we put together a, a, the House Armed Services says this is what we want. Right, it goes moves on up, and will it will it be appropriate? It's similar to like Guam legislature, right? Will the money be going there? So we were fortunate to have a judge is his uh, nickname, uh, John is his real name, Carter, a longtime senator, a uh, Congress member uh, from Texas, whose uh, subcommittee is uh, military construction. And so, uh, and a couple of other senators, one from Texas, one from uh, uh, one of the other states too. Coming here, coming to Guam, putting your feet on the ground, seeing the facilities, uh, talking to our admiral uh, from, and we started in Hawaii and then come to Guam and then went to Kwajalein, seeing the bigger picture uh, and, and understanding even clearer the importance of our strategic location uh, solidified uh, our support uh, from the military construction side on the appropriation side for, for Guam. Uh, so th I'm happy for that. Uh, we're also inviting other members of, of, of Congress too uh, to come on out. There's so many members that are more interested now than Guam than ever before. Uh, some, of course, have gone to Taiwan and other locations in the Philippines too, uh, but they're coming to Guam and the invitation is open. And the more I can get the 118 Congress members to Guam, the less battle that we have. Uh, to get the support that we need. And then that opens up our conversation for other things like SSI, uh, for education, for uh, public safety, for public health too. Uh, so they're, they're, they can understand, they want to support, and, and the speed uh, and the urgency is, is really important right now. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about the, the expansion, extension of the H2B visa program uh, after the break. But uh, once again, here is another uh, video of the congressman from his first 100 days in office. And again, the topic was uh, the defense of Guam, this pivot to the Pacific. And given that Guam is part of the U.S. homeland, in your personal military assessment, General, is Guam defended to an acceptable standard especially considering that the territory does not fall under the umbrella of NORAD. General. That question is best answered by Admiral Aquilino. What I can tell you is the department's moving forward with an aggressive plan to defend Guam. Missile Defense Agency is working that right now. I look forward to working with the Missile Defense Agency as we build capabilities out to defend the CONUS as well. Uh, what capabilities exist or would you recommend to service our military hardware with this huge buildup, especially in the Indo-Pacific area, because of our threat, and recommendations specifically for our Navy vessels in Guam and other outlying areas of the United States? Well, certainly we care a great deal about the maintenance and modernization of our vessels <clears throat> in the Western Pacific. So uh, be that Hawaii and Guam, we want to see work done there and, and be stable. Um, beyond that, um, not tr trying to avoid the question, but I'm just trying to think more so our assets in Guam, and I just don't have a ton of visibility on that. I don't, don't know if I can defer to my other two colleagues. Well, I think you first of all have to recognize that given the pivot to the Pacific and given the challenge, Guam moves from being on the periphery to being in the dead center of the conversation, right? When we talk about distances of supplies to the Pacific, you're, you're talking about distances from the continent. The distances from Guam are very different. And so being able to store things, being able to maintain things, all of those functions, when they can be safely done forward, tremendously change the calculus. So I think there's a, a different answer over the, with the two new strategies we've seen about how central a role uh, 
Guam is to the mission and to its ability to sustain the mission. So I think this is a, a great conversation out of the department about what can we do here so that, I mean, if you think about it, the department has to move it all the way across during a conflict. They're putting people at risk that entire journey. If it's already there, then you save the bring it home, fix it, bring it back. So the question is, what are the assets that are best supported there? Those I, I don't know from a military mission point of view, but clearly its location dramatically changes its, its value in the situation. I'd say the same thing. We 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 talked about um, the volume of munitions you use is always more than you plan. The duration of an engagement is more than you plan as well. And being able to sustain equipment ships in this case closer to the fight means that they're they're available more and for longer periods of time. So I, I agree with David that Guam becomes much more interesting as we um, geographically as we think about. Um, planning and pivoting our budgeting and our programming and what have you towards something that's in that region. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield my time. Yeah, that is a really critical area for us to, to focus some attention. Guam is, Guam is going to be in the center of everything as we move into the Indo-PACOM uh, theater. And we need to be thinking about these things now and making sure we're prepared before conflict rather than regretting that we didn't. Uh, you know, when we went into Afghanistan uh, 20 years ago in Iraq, uh, we really realized how unprepared we were as a nation. And I remember my first, that's when I first got here. And our first uh, two years, we were resolved to never let that happen again. Well, you know, we need to be thinking about and I would like for y'all to be thinking about how we can bring our partners into that process to make sure Guam is fully prepared for whatever may come in the not too distant future. Island Family Pharmacy is committed to providing care and service that goes beyond dispensing prescriptions. We offer personalized services focused on quality care, outstanding customer experience with prompt and professional attention. At our pharmacy, you are family. Candid News will soon be reaching a milestone fifth year since it was established in 2018. We are a platform for advocacy journalism. We expose corruption, fight against the sexual exploitation of children, and tend to support the underdog, the underprivileged, and those trying to find a path from addiction. With over 50,000 followers, we offer advertising opportunities for both large and small businesses. We offer competitive rates that are often well below what other advertising agencies charge their clients. Give us a call today. Welcome back to Candid. The military buildup in full swing, billions of dollars coming to Guam for military construction. And I know because I work in the construction industry, there's a lot of work ahead and just not enough people actually to do the work. And so that's why, as the Congressman mentioned earlier, there's this critical need to 
expand the H-2B visa program. And so when, in the break, Congressman, we were talking about, um, you know, your efforts to, to spread more awareness. And there's actually a delegation you mentioned that might be going to D.C. Uh, soon, the, the chamber, because you've, you've been meeting with the chamber, I believe, um, talking with them about this critical need, the Guam Contractors Association. So tell me about the delegation that's heading out. Yeah, so the Guam Chamber has uh, consistently for a number of years uh, gone to the state, uh, the capital, uh, and has worked with many uh, members uh, to get Guam's voice heard. Yeah. Uh, so we're, we're united uh, with the Guam Chamber's uh, points of view of what's needed for the island for, for the buildup. And there'll be, I, my understanding is that they'll be out next, next week when I get back to DC as well. So we scheduled several meetings with uh, numerous uh, members of the 100th and 18th Congress. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to them uh, to come and speak uh, for the island of Guam too. Uh, so my classmates, I call them in the, in the Congress, uh, can hear a, the united voice coming from uh, the businesses on Guam and uh, that I've been echoing and hearing it from the point of view of uh, contractors and business folks and in support of and doing things the right way uh, for the buildup and how they can uh, leverage this to ensure that our buildup continues properly and that the benefits for our island is there too. Mm -hmm. What are some of the immediate concerns though? You mentioned you talked to the to the Chamber of Commerce. And did you meet with them this, this go around? Um, we, we've had telephone conversations. Mm -hmm. I haven't had the chance to sit down and visit them personally, but I'm, they know they'll be seeing me when we get back to DC just in a few days. Mm -hmm. uh, the immediate concern is, is of course, is the H2B workers. Yeah. Right. So uh, this, their contract ends on, on this budget period, uh, and because it was only extended for one year, uh, we can't uh, continue to do something like that because it's very, um, it, it's too costly for the contractors to be working on a contract that says we have these num hundreds of workers, thousands of workers now in support. Uh, and not knowing that that will be renewed the following year. Uh, we need to expand that so there's no question and so we can complete the job so in the bidding process they know and they can project uh, what needs to be done in order to meet the um, RFPs requirements. Uh, that voice, of course, will be echoed through the Guam Chamber during their visit um, and that's why I, what I'm going to advise the Guam Chamber is uh, make sure to wear comfortable shoes because there's going to be a lot of walking going on through the halls of Congress and all these different offices. Uh, you, you, if you check your Fitbit watch or whatever you use, uh, you're going to get your steps in too. Do, do you know who's who's going from the chamber? Uh, not not specifically. Oh, well, I know, I think uh, the, on the military side that uh, Phil Santos, uh, I'm sure, will be there as well. And the president, Catherine uh, Castro will be uh, there too. Uh, there's other members, uh, but uh, there's uh, if it was 100% already, I'm, I mm -hmm. don't I don't know. But for those two, yes, that's what I understand. I want to just read, uh, give some shout outs to the people that are watching online. Uh, we've got uh, Auntie Pumpkin and Uncle Tony and Sandy Ago, Benji <laughs> Perez. Benji. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Benji. Hey, Benji. Uh, Jennifer Sanchez, Pam Duval, uh, Carl Bloss, uh, Gina Marie Tenario Call. Good morning. Thank you for watching. Um, Jose Ted Pajaco Jr., uh, Congressman, get the reconciliation report of the CARES Act and ARPA disbursements. Hold the Leon Guerrero administration accountable. Have you heard anything about these re reconciliation reports? Uh, no, other than what I'm reading in the in our local papers mm, okay. uh, with the OPA's uh, discussion. So mm -hmm. I, I think um, our government is on, on those and reviewing that. So, uh, But you mentioned San Diego as well. I was in there. Auntie, yeah. yeah, I was there at the okay. House of Chamorros uh, for that celebration. I was able just to say hello while I was there. So it was a wonderful experience. And I want to make sure I go back at least annually too. That was mm -hmm. nice. Do you plan, though, on looking into any of the, the federal uh, expenditures of uh, ARPA or CARES Act? Or, or yeah, I, I think it's important first we uh, settle what, what's necessary on mm -hmm. Guam. And then if that uh, comes across my desk, I, I would have to address it. But at, at this point, uh, uh, our focus is specifically regarding the, uh, the National Defense Act yep. uh, and making sure our economy continues and getting the buildup going and funding continues to support mm -hmm. the island. Um, also watching Julian Bradalio, good morning. Uh, Robert Kitano, Hafede, Uncle Robert from Hoggett. Uh, Manny and Ning Regis, uh, Juanita uh, 
Mackey, uh, Mike Grace Gloss. Uh, thank you all for, for watching this morning. We're going to continue uh, talks with Congressman Moylan. Um, but again, here's another look back at his first 100 days and him questioning about the buildup and the extension of the H2B program. For Mr. Owens, in your testimony, you, uh, you stated that a long-term extension of H-2B visas is needed to meet Department of Defense construction requirements. Do you believe that the failure of the extended H-2B and therefore have construction projects fall behind deadlines or to be left uncompleted would leave the United States in a disadvantaged position in the Indo-Pacific? Absolutely, I do. You gave a really good statement in your, in your report here, which I read through. Do, do us a favor, just highlight this a little bit for me, just about a, a minute or two. There. I'd be happy to, and, and, and I uh, really appreciate you uh, enabling us to, to talk about this a little bit more, because it is a critical, uh, a critical aspect. The, the construction workforce to do all of the work, the MILCON work that needs to happen on Guam to support the, 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 port, the posture that we need in the Indo-Pacific does not exist. And a try as we have over the course of the last several years to uh, bring U.S. workforce to Guam to, to satisfy that construction need, we've, we've been unable to, to meet that need. Uh, so as we increase the amount of MILCON that needs to happen, um, we're at risk for construction contracts being uh, labor, particularly aspects of construction contracts, not being available to keep on schedule and on budget. Uh, so the extension that would... Uh, that we are asking for in our legislative proposition uh, would solve that problem um, for for Guam and for, for the Indo-Pacific. And I, and I would say that we are going to continue all the efforts that we have been doing to encourage U.S. workforce to get to Guam and do this work. Uh, but absent that, we need certainty so that we can be able to deliver these projects on time and on budget. Uh, thank you, sir, and, and uh, that has been... Thank you for have, letting me speechify. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so all, all our uh, efforts there and all our communications with uh, indo pacom uh, uh, generals is basically this needs to be done, and that it can be done with the continued extension of the H2B, so I appreciate your support in continuing to push that. Uh, and then... Uh, Island Family Pharmacy is committed to providing care and service that goes beyond dispensing prescriptions. We offer personalized services focused on quality care, outstanding customer experience with prompt and professional attention. At our pharmacy, you are family. Candid News will soon be reaching a milestone fifth year since it was established in 2018. We are a platform for advocacy journalism. We expose corruption, fight against the sexual exploitation of children, and tend to support the underdog, the underprivileged, and those trying to find a path from addiction. With over 50,000 followers, we offer advertising opportunities for both large and small businesses. We offer competitive rates that are often well below what other advertising agencies charge their clients. Give us a call today. Welcome back to Candid. Uh, we're winding down our show with Congressman uh, James Moylan. Uh, April, it's Youth Month, and uh, the Congressman, you have some initiatives uh, that you've got going on, uh, starting with uh, the Service Academy. Yes. 
Uh, so I've been going to several of the high schools. I think it was at Tijin, uh, Southern, uh, GW, uh, a few others as well, uh, promoting the service academy. This, uh, the time period is coming up for their submission to our different academies, uh, West Point, uh, Navy, Air Force, even Merchant Marines. Uh, they, we have, uh, the members have the opportunity to nominate at least 10 members for one slot for each of these academies. So been pr promoting this, I uh, had the chance to go to different ROTC um, uh, groups there and was very impressed at uh, the members that are excited or, or the young, young adults there that are excited to get into the service academies. Um, and that's what our nation needs. Right, right now is a critical time of, of filling slots in the military and building our members and keeping our, our military branches strong. Uh, one in particular also is to include the Merchant Marines. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's a fine opportunity, it's a, it's a good position to have and many workers are, are, ne are needed on that. The Merchant Marines job in time of war is to provide the supplies uh, uh, to, for our trips wherever they are in the world. Uh, so that, that's one in, in the Air Force too. And, and also uh, eventually those in the, uh, in the service could even consider the Space Force as, as well. So uh, please, uh, th uh, their ROTC programs uh, are instructing their students on how to do the online applications. Then the submittal time frame is, is there too, and that's coming on up. And the sooner you submit it, in, uh, the better. The closing isn't until uh, a few months down the line. Mm -hmm. So you can always do adjustments based on if you got better SAT scores, AS, uh, SAT scores, and, or more recommendation letters that you want to put on in there. Uh, so it, just make that packet as strong as possible. I want to make sure uh, that if I, there's a maximum number I can submit for nominations, I will do that. But it's dependent upon uh, the student's interest in submitting that in. So. Uh, we wonder, uh, we're very patriotic on our, in our island. Uh, uh, let's, let's go for uh, be, becoming an officer and being a good leaders too for military uh, personnel. One deadline also that's coming up, uh, the Congressional Art Competition. Yes, yes. Uh, so for those uh, folks who have uh, been to D.C. and gone through our tunnels, uh, there's one really long one uh, that gets you to the Capitol and on this long wall is the artwork of, uh, from each member of Congress in their district. So we get one opportunity for one year to display this artwork that has won in, in your district. So the competition is now open and we actually have one submittal already uh, that came from an academy, an academy student for, from grades 9th through 12th. Uh, the submitted time now is now. We have a few weeks to, to get it on in. Uh, the dimensions on how the weight and, and what, what's all involved in the drawings. You can do, even do computer drawings. Uh, you can do sketches, you can do oil. It, it, there's so much opportunity that you can do uh, to display your artwork on one year on the, in the tunnels of Congress. And then that goes into record of con in Congress too. Uh, one of the teachers, I think it was at JFK, uh, the art teacher, he is, he, when he was a student, his artwork actually hung on the wall. Uh, that was under uh, uh, Congressman Underwood at the time. Uh, so um, uh, the current f uh, picture that we have on the wall is from a student and it's a picture of, I think it's his face, in different puzzle pi uh, pieces, right? And putting it all together. The theme f uh, for this contest is uh, uh, Guam, where America's day begins. Uh, and the purpose of, for that theme is, is what we're currently uh, facing now in our, in our nation, right? Where America's day begins, where the constitution begins, where, where freedom begins. Right, so that's what we want to carry on over. So when people go and, and, and see these pictures, that's what we're trying to reflect in that message. Uh, the name of the artist will be placed there. Uh, the, where that art is from will be placed there. And I'm able to use that as I walk through the, the, uh, the tunnel myself, because I stop in front of it, and there's thousands of people every day uh, going in front of that too. And I have the opportunities to say, hey, that's, that's Guam. Do you know about Guam? Let me tell you about Guam, right? And this is the picture about Guam. It's about where America's day begins. Did you know that? Okay, now you do, right? <laughs> so, so I encourage all, all our students to be, um, display that. Be very, very proud of your island. Be very proud of your nation. And uh, our goal is to help and see what we can do to have that winner uh, come there and probably hang up that picture along with their, their, um, their adult uh, accompanying them too. Well, I thank you so much for joining us You're this uh, Saturday morning. Yes. Um, final comments, any message to the people of Guam? I, I'm so glad to be home. Uh, I'm very proud to uh, represent our island 
And uh, just to let you know, I'm, I'm my, your voice is heard and Guam is being uh, well represented there. And we'll continue to do that. And as soon as I get a week's break, I'll, I'll make sure I can come out every time back home to Guam. I miss the beaches and, and sometimes uh, I'm thinking of buying red tennis shoes uh, so I can tap the heels to say there's no place like home. There's just no place like home. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you, uh, Bree, for this you. opportunity. And I look forward to coming on back and, and saying hello to everybody once again. Well, safe travels back to, to DC. Thank you. And we close out our show just as we began with the greatest hit uh, from the Guam legislature. Just remember, use your voice, speak up, attend public hearings, send in written testimony, because after all, you get what you vote for. Thanks for watching. Have a safe weekend. Para i honra, para i gloria, a viva i isla sen para. Para i honra, para i gloria, a viva i isla sen para. Todo i tempo i pas para hita, Zan ginni lang it na bendishon. Con tri piligru na fan sofu ham, zu us protehi is languam. Con tri piligru na fan sofu ham, zu us protehi is languam.